Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. You may remember last week I unboxed the new LOLSBOT mini printer that I've got just here. And you may remember from that unboxing that this printer ships with a brand new type of hot end called the LOLSBOT Hexagon Hot End. And the hot end's pretty cool because it goes much hotter and it can therefore print more exotic materials like nylon and polycarbonate. So I used the TAS4, which I've got just here, for quite a lot of projects due to the large build area. So I was thinking it would be really good if we could upgrade the hot end on there as well so we can print the same materials. This is the TAS4 with its standard hot end, which is the Buddish Nozzle 2, which is uh, pretty standard across the entire Lulzbot range until now. But it just happens what I've got is, straight out of Lulzbot R&D, I have a replacement hot end, which you can probably see there has the Lulzbot Hexagon hot end on and the mountings for the Lulzbot TAS. Here's the one in the LOLSBOT Mini. So if we hold those up side by side, you can see that's virtually identical, uh, pretty much with the fan, the other fan, and all the bits and pieces. Um, and the extrude is almost identical as well. The only difference between that and the one in my hand is the back plate there, which mounts slightly differently for the Taz. So I should add that this new hot end isn't yet a product you can buy from LOLSBOT, although LOLSBOT are an open hardware company, so if you look on their development site, you can actually find the plans for these. You could acquire the bits, make the 3D printed parts, and you could fit one yourself. Um, the firmware upgrade is also available, which we need to do for the new temperature parameters. So this is straight out of the R&D department. It will be released as a product later in the year. The TAS4 hot end or tool head is a very easy change so all we need to do is undo some wires which are here with these connectors which are all colour coded as well and then we need to undo one screw here and we should find this entire tool head will come off and LOLSBOT supply the correct screwdrivers and so on with each printer so now this just lifts off and we'll just keep that screw safe um, and that's it really so here they are side by side. The one on the left is a very used Buddish nozzle. And you can see there's a bit dirty. It's got a heater block with a heater resistor in. It's got a ceramic thermal insulator and a heat sink. Um, these pieces are actually laser cut wood. Um, and there's some bolts holding the whole thing together in a triangle formation. The main difference you'll notice on the new hexagon or metal hot end is this addition of the fan on the heat sink. And that's because it gets much hotter. So that fan cools this heat sink and stops heat rising into the extruder body where it might melt the extruder itself because it gets that hot or the filament that's being fed into it. Um, because of the addition of the fan, we've actually got an extra connector. So the Buddish nozzle has a total of three connectors for its fan, the motor and the hot end with the thermistor. And this one has an additional one. So it's got two fan connectors. So there aren't enough cables in the connecting cable that goes down to the extruder. So this hot end has been provided with a whole bunch of cables and the extra connectors for the multi-pin connector on the electronics box. There's also some instructions which we can have a look at. So if we have a look at the Aleph Objects website, basically Aleph Objects is a company and LOLSBOT is the product. So that's ohai-kit.alephobjects.com and OHAI stands for Open Hardware Assembly Instructions. So you can find instructions for assembling the entire range of LOLSBOT products. Um, so we've got one there obviously for the TAS 3, the Kit TAS, the LOLSBOT Mini and so on. So you can take this thing to pieces and put it back together again. If we have a look in add-ons right now, then we can see, um, you know, there's one for the extruder fan, 12 to 24 volt upgrade, all sorts of things for all of the bits and pieces. And we've got one here for the new um, all metal hot end. So let's have a look. So I'm not sure if these instructions are in draft at the moment, but they're pretty good. Obviously that's a picture of it and everything that's provided and obviously removing the extruders I've already done and so on. So this tells you exactly what to do with the extra wires, which is basically putting new wires into the connector. Shows you exactly which pins and that's for the extra fan and then how to open the electronics box and where to add the wires onto the Rambo board, which is the open source electronics board for 3D printers and putting the cover back on and zip tying it all up. So I don't know how easy that is to see, but basically I've taken the two additional wires and shoved those into pins five and six as per the instructions. Um, and then they've provided a bigger piece of conduit here, which is now to contain all the wires. So we need to get those wires to all go back inside. And then we can put the strain relief sleeve back on. So this is a split conduit. 
that you can open up and put around the wires. This connector just screws back on and it's got a screw on strain relief sleeve that goes in there. So that is all neatly zipped up inside. So we've got those sticking out where they connect to the actual hot end and that goes to the printer. So let's open up the electronics box and see where this goes. Here is the electronics box. I've taken the cover off of course, which is four screws, which again come off with the appropriate long spot screwdriver. And I've attached the corresponding wires inside here. So it's this, you can just see, which goes on here, it is in the instructions. And I've just tucked that cable away so it doesn't get tangled in the fan when I put it back on. Because if you leave loose cables hanging around, they rub on the inside of the fan. And that goes into pins five and six again in the connector. And those just push in. And again, that's documented in the um, hardware assembly guide. So now we can put the lid back on and we can get that firmware flashed. At the bottom of the guide, once you've done all the mechanical parts, there's a couple of links here for update firmware. And that downloads a zip file, which you need to unzip for the Marlin firmware for the new hot end. So there's a couple of steps to flashing that, but if you have a look on the um, original guide page and go back to firmware flashing, then there's um, several guides on flashing your firmware. Basically, we need to look at this one here, installing your 3D printer firmware. You can also get some of the instructions from modifying your local Windows Arduino installation. But this is the best one to start with on the left. So um, obviously we've got the firmware. What we do need is the Arduino 1.0.5 IDE. Um, it's available for various operating systems, including Windows, Mac and Linux. So you need to install that, but you also need to add in the Arduino add-ons folder, which is available from this download link. And that adds in the hardware support and the dependencies for the Rambo board, which is what's actually in the printer. Once you've extracted the Marlin firmware download, you should have a bunch of files that look like this. You'll find one in there called Marlin INO, which you can open and that should open in your Arduino IDE. And you can see here I've got 1.0.5. So you can click on the tick to verify it, and if you've installed your Arduino add-ons correctly, that should verify. You should also check that your board is set to Rambo. The next step is to plug your printer in, power it up, plug it into the USB cable, and click on the arrow for upload. And that should compile and upload the new firmware onto the printer. I fitted the tool head back on and plugged all the cables in. I've powered the printer up, it's connected with the USB cable, so I'm just about to flash the firmware. So we'll click on the upload arrow. It says compiling sketch. There's a green progress bar just here. I don't know if you can see it. It is now saying uploading. And the printer is rebooting. So you can see it's saying TAS version 4.1. And that should be all ready to go. My firmware flash was successful. And I've now heated up the hot end and put filament in. I've just put in some white ABS. I've heated my nozzle up to actually 230 degrees, which is what I find is best for this ABS. You could use 240, and I've heated the bed up to um, 85 as recommended by Lulzbot. So I've actually sliced up a mystery item which we're going to print. And I've already leveled the bed, so it wasn't too much different from the Budish nozzle, but I've just fine-tuned the Z-stop so that it's in the right place. And we're just going to print something off SD card which I've already sliced. Won't be too hard to guess what the item is, although it is 50% bigger than the one I printed on the Lulzbot Mini.
it's about a week later. I've done quite a lot of printing with the TAS 4 with its all metal hot end on. Uh, initial observations are that it basically gets hotter a lot quicker. It seems to have a heater cartridge instead of a heater resistor, which might be the reason for that. The prints are incredibly clean. Um, they all seem amazing basically. I'm not sure if they're slightly more shiny than they are with the old one. Um, so far I've only printed ABS. I've got a lot of parts to do for the existing projects. But I've just got my first reel of Tallman 618 nylon. So I'm going to be using some nylon in my projects. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check back for some of those projects to see where I'm going to use this. Uh, the nylon hopefully is going to be slightly flexible, quite impact resistant and incredibly tough to print in. So I've got projects like a custom telescopic lightsaber blade, some other things like that that never really work in ABS. So that's the end of this video. Don't forget to check back for more 3D printing videos and more project videos in my channel.